I'm good. My son wasn't born with us knowing that he had a heart condition. He wasn't diagnosed until three. So we lived three and a half years of normal. He walked, he talked, he was potty trained, he went to school, he was normal. We were told the day he was diagnosed that it wasn't a matter of if, but when he would need a heart transplant. Ultimately, we were diagnosed um, in Indianapolis, and within 48 hours of um, a cardiac arrest event, we were transferred to Cincinnati Children's, and we stayed there for 315 days. Waiting was the hardest thing of the entire process. Part of that is that I'm a nurse, and so my job is to fix kids. My job is to heal them and make them better and send them home. And I couldn't do it for my son. The other part is I'm a mom. And so my love and my kisses are supposed to make things better. And I couldn't make my son better. Children can wait anywhere from one day to several years waiting for a heart that's appropriate for them. Unfortunately, not all kids who are on the heart transplant wait list can survive the time they that is required for them to wait. As a matter of fact, about 13% of kids who are on the heart transplant wait list will die while waiting for an appropriate donor. While there, he was on ECMO, he was on Rotaflow, he received a Berlin heart a transplant, and then our end journey was time in the rehab unit, recovering from a stroke that he had while awaiting the heart. And his stroke was um, devastating at the time. He's doing much better now, but really was a highlighting event of how could we do this better and how can we learn from each other. His heart's perfect. He's almost six years post-transplant. His heart is healthy. It is happy. It's everything we needed. But the stroke changed all of us. He's doing things that people thought that he would never do, but he's almost 10 and he can't read or write. And that is my biggest struggle right now because at three, he was on board to doing all of those things. When we first started this initiative, and I would have to sit down with a family whose child was having to go on to a Berlin heart or some other type of VAD, I would have to say that one in three children would have a stroke. And that was a very hard thing to do. Hard for me as a doctor, and I can't even imagine how hard to hear that as a parent when you know that there's no other options that you have to accept for your child. And that wasn't acceptable. So there were five institutions that felt very strongly that we needed to really focus on pediatric stroke, specifically in the devices. So we started as five centers working really closely together to try to share protocols, um, learn from variation, and we quickly grew over two years to greater than 40 centers. We started almost as a proof of concept project with what we called the ABCs of stroke prevention. Within that, we had a bundle where teams were testing three interventions to see if we could reduce the stroke rate with VAD patients. And so with that, we started using different anticoagulants, which are blood thinners, to help um, prevent blood clots from forming in these pumps. Based on single institutional practices, we wanted to start spreading the word. And so within action, one of the initiatives was to create a guide for other centers to follow so that we could evaluate this uh, different anticoagulant called bivalirudin for children who were on VAD support. And over the last few years, more and more centers have adopted this practice. We've learned a whole lot in a very rapid period of time on how there are good things about it and there are bad things about it. And through all of this collaboration, we've learned together very quickly. What we discovered actually was that even our first swing at that process of managing blood thinning and blood pressure in a consistent way succeeded in reducing stroke to a huge degree. So we've made a vast improvement, and whether it's just because of the anticoagulant or a variety of other reasons of us collaborating together, I think the impact has been tremendous. You have to know that there's a problem, you have to admit that there's a problem, and then you have to find ways to better that problem, and that's exactly what's happened with stroke. When Liam had his stroke, I don't know these specifics, but I'm pretty sure there was a handful of people that our team could call. There's not just five people now. There is hundreds, probably, of people that they can say, hey, what do you think about this? Hey, how would you treat this? If it was you, what would you do? And that, that's phenomenal. Action in itself, 
becoming aware and doing everything they can to prevent strokes is the greatest blessing so that another parent doesn't have to deal with what we have.